In this video, I'm going to give you the five most important reasons why buying single dividend stocks is better than buying an ETF. As we go through this list of five reasons, each reason becomes more and more important with the last two reasons being, in my opinion, vitally important. First reason why buying single dividend stocks is better than buying ETFs is because you don't have to pay an ongoing expense fee when buying single dividend stocks like you have to when you buy an ETF. Here you see six very popular ETFs. Notice that the third one, VOO, has a very low expense ratio of only 0.03%. On the other hand, at the far right, the NASDAQ 100 Covered Call ETF, QILD, has a high expense ratio of 0.6%. But although you're giving up some return, if saving time is most important to you, then it might be worth paying these ETF managers this expense fee to save your time. Here you see a small piece of my outright stock ownership account. Notice at the red arrow that under the gross expense ratio column, the stocks I own don't have any expense associated with them. The one exception is the one ETF we bought, QQQ. At this point in my life, I'm happy to do the work myself since I'm already watching my 200 plus companies closely for opportunities to sell options in them. So I don't want to give up any return by buying ETFs because I have the time to do it myself. The second reason why buying single dividend paying stocks is better than ETFs is because some of the popular ETFs, including the very popular SCHD ETF that I like, which I made a video about, I'll leave a link to that video in the description below. But the problem is that some ETFs like SCHD, they don't own any real estate. Real estate is such a huge part of the investing world. For example, you're probably sitting in some type of real estate right now, whether you're at a coffee shop or at an office or your home. Or you probably buy your groceries either at a grocery store or have them delivered from a physical grocery store. You probably use a cell phone. They use cell phone towers, which are mostly owned by real estate companies. If you have a car that's not electric, then you probably get gas at a gas station, which is owned by a real estate company or a real estate investor. So I believe that having some exposure to real estate is important to have a well-balanced portfolio. If you buy certain ETFs, they may not have any real estate in them like SCHD doesn't. Now, if you want to invest in ETFs as compared to picking your own individual stocks, but you want to have some real estate exposure, you can always consider the very popular real estate ETF, ticker symbol VNQ, or something similar to it. VNQ has a nice low expense ratio of 0.12% and it has over $63 billion in assets under management. VNQ is a well diversified real estate portfolio ETF. Notice in the blue box that it currently holds 170 different real estate companies or even other real estate indexes like you see in the number one spot. This ETF includes companies such as Realty Income, which is known as the monthly dividend paying REIT. The third reason why buying dividend paying stocks is better than ETFs, and remember, as we progress through this list, in my opinion, these reasons become more and more important. The third reason is that you have total control over which sectors you're investing in. Now, some people like to rotate which sectors of the investing world they own during different phases of the market cycle. Here you see an example strategy for rotating in and out of sectors. The market cycle typically moves ahead of the economic cycle. Since investors are trying to make decisions based on the future, they may change their investments if they invest using this strategy. Because of that, the current market stage can tell a sector rotation investor which sectors will most likely become the leaders in the market in the near future. Here you see in the blue column on the left, the four different stages of the market cycle and the far right column in the green box, you see the corresponding sectors to rotate into. If you're buying individual stocks, you can simply focus on the stocks that are in the specific sector that matches the market cycle that we're in. If you buy broad-based ETFs like SPY or SCHD, you don't have the ability to pick which sectors you're going into. Some traders will even exit the sectors they expect to perform the worst for the current or coming market environment and enter those they believe will outperform. This isn't something that I do, but as you can see in this chart, it is a trading strategy that can be successful if done properly. But keep in mind that trying to guess which phase of the business cycle we are in and when exactly that phase will end. So if rotating in and out of sectors is important to you, then a broad-based ETF probably isn't the best option. You should probably consider buying individual dividend stocks or at worst, ETFs that focus on the sectors that you want to buy into. Now we've reached, in my opinion, the two most important reasons why investing in individual dividend stocks is a lot better than investing in ETFs. Now at the end of this video, I'm going to show you proof of that from my own account. The fourth reason and second most important one in my opinion to buy individual stocks instead of ETFs is that by investing in individual dividend paying stocks, you're able to control your dividend yield. 
Now, why is that important? We are all in different stages in our investing careers. Some of us might be in our 20s. We might be willing to buy companies that have a lower starting dividend, but a higher dividend growth rate. Here you see a list of some of the more popular dividend paying companies that as you can see in the right blue column, have a 20 year track record of growing their dividend anywhere from 10% up to 25%. However, if you look at the column in the red box, you see that none of them have a starting dividend of over 3.5% and only one of them has a starting dividend yield of over 3%. In fact, a lot of them have a starting dividend yield of 2% and some are even under 1%. If you're trying to live off dividends in the near future, this low starting dividend yield will make it very difficult, will make the amount of money you need to have invested very high. However, if you're young, these might be some great individual stocks to consider. On the other hand, if you're looking to retire sooner, say in the next five, 10 or even 15 years, you might want to consider buying stocks that have a higher starting dividend yield, but may have a lower dividend growth rate. Now, this is not my extensive list here but it is a list of a few other companies that I track that have a high starting dividend yield, as you can see in the blue column. Some of them don't show much or even any dividend growth, as you can see in the green column, but some of them show a decent amount of dividend growth over the past 20 years. If retirement is nearing, or you want to start investing your dividends to live off sooner, buying companies that have a high starting dividend with some amount of growth might be the way to go. Personally, I do a combination of the two, but since I'm not in my 20s or 30s, I tend to focus on higher starting dividend companies that have some dividend growth history. I prefer to buy companies that have at least a starting dividend yield of over 3%. Here you see at the very bottom in the blue box in my outright stock ownership account, which is primarily made up of individual dividend paying stocks, our average dividend yield across our portfolio of 94 hand-picked positions is currently 3.97%. I've now sorted this portfolio by highest yield. Here you see in the blue column that we own quite a few individual dividend stocks that are paying a dividend yield of over 5%. In fact, four of them are paying a dividend yield of over 7%. By buying individual dividend paying stocks, you're able to cater your dividend yield to your personal situation and your personal preference. Now, I know this can seem overwhelming looking at the 94 stock portfolio. So I encourage you to stay tuned in to the end of this video because there I'll tell you where you can get some help doing all this, which will save you a lot of time. Being able to control your dividend yield is one of the two main reasons why I like buying individual dividend paying stocks as compared to ETFs. If you're liking finding value in this video, please hit the subscribe button and bell notification. Also, please hit the thumbs up button to support the channel. The fifth reason, and in my opinion, the most important reason why buying individual dividend paying stocks is better than ETFs is that it enables you to take advantage of opportunities to buy individual companies when they're beaten down. This gives you the opportunity to potentially, over the long term, have a higher return than if you bought an ETF. Now you've heard that many investors, they don't even beat the return of the S&P 500. But if an investor was disciplined, educated, and picked strong companies that simply have been beaten down in price, if done properly, this should allow you to outperform popular ETFs like SPY. I would love to show you the performance of my outright stock ownership account that I just share with you. But I just switched over to a brand new account so the history is not there except for the past two months. But here's another personal account I manage in which we have the same trading philosophy of buying individual dividend paying stocks outright. As you can see this year, with the S&P 500 down 15.1% and the NASDAQ down almost 30%, this account is only down 2.76%. Now I'm not implying that we're going to do this all the time, but you see what could possibly happen when you're able to pick the individual dividend stocks that you're buying at the most opportune time and then hold on to them. But you might be asking, well, Randy, this portfolio performed well when the market was down. How did it perform when the market was going up? I started this account right at two years ago. So we have two years worth of history. One nice thing about that time frame is that in the first year, 2021, that was a very strong bullish year. But then the second year has been a strong bearish year. Here you see the two year history of the same outright stock ownership account. Remember, we are mainly buying individual dividend paying stocks. At the red arrow, that's the week of December 31st of 2021 when the market switched from a bull market to a bear market. Notice that for a portion of that 2021 year, when we were in a strong bull market, we're beating the S&P 500 and NASDAQ. And right at the very peak of the market, we're pretty much even with the S&P 500 and we're still beating the NASDAQ. And keep in mind that we're buying individual stocks that are beaten down. So typically, we expect some of those investments to take time to turn around. That's why I say that this is, in my opinion, the most important reason why I like to buy individual stocks outright instead of ETFs. You can pick what I consider high quality companies that are trading at what I consider to be a discount. You simply can't do that with a broad-based ETF. 
If you'd like to get an alert as soon as we buy stocks outright and sell options, check out the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. If you'd like to see how we've been able to accumulate tens of thousands of dollars of some of our favorite dividend paying stocks all for free, check out the video at the link above in the description below entitled Free Stock Using Options. Until next time, happy investing and we'll see you again soon.